to this podcast. We're, we're live. We're live. Hey, welcome to the Tim and Goo and Goo God Baby podcast. Because sh- you, you want to show everyone? Sorry, one second. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> So just so you know, the baby was crying earlier. That's why we're waiting. That's why it's like taking a while to get going. But she can just mute and mute too. She can she can tune in and talk about the upside for certain fighters and their floors as well. Um, we won't recap. I, I had a, I was on Argetta last card and that one didn't work out. Um, I didn't really watch the card. I was on vacation, so I, but I kind of rewatched some stuff back. But we, anything you want to talk about on that card? We go right to three hundred. Okay, this is a bit annoying. Like, I felt like um, Alan probably had this, like singular pathway to winning that fight. Like, uh, like if, if, did you watch the fight? Uh, not really. Not really. No. No. Um, yeah, Curtis kind of did a thing. Alan just kind of grabbed some back takes, won a split decision. Uh, yeah. no, it was like Miranda Pantoja kind of a vibe. It was just like Curtis was plus one seventy, probably looked like minus one fifty. He just picked like the one permutation of all kind of situation. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, uh, let's just go into Argetta was a little bit annoying. Which which one? Argetta was a little bit annoying. Like he was like yeah, I, he was like I, minus four hundred live before the finish. Yeah, I watch it live and it's weird because it's like yeah, like I, I don't know. It's just like it's because I'm on Argetta. I don't want to sound biased, but he's, he landed nine takedowns and he was in like some good positions at times. I feel like he could have won that fight for sure. And you you can mute whenever you need to, just you know. I only um, have two hands, right? <laughs> Yeah, my bad. <laughs> You're so big, though. I feel like one hand can hold that, baby. But um, let's go into just UFC 300. Let's just start from the top, and we can maybe talk about more fights this time than just a main card, because like everything's basically a main card level fight. But I'll go into Pereira Hill first, um, and then you can go. I. It's tough because like there's a little injury variance here, just because Hill's coming off, you know a pretty serious injury, but I'm going to guess he's going to show up in decent form or else I feel like he wouldn't be fighting. And I'm picking Hill to win here. Like Pereira, I'm not that high on Pereira just as a champion overall, just because I feel like he skipped the line because of his like rivalry with Izzy. And there's a lot of guys I feel like, even there's like mid-tier grappler, like, like Weidman could give Pereira issues. Like honestly, just like a ton of different grapplers could, but that's not really analogous here. I still do think Hill's a better grappler here, but I think they're going to strike. But I just, I think Hill's a better boxer. Like, if he can just, I, and I feel like he pressures enough to where he might be able to deal with the leg kicks. And I think he has better hands and I think he has better durability than Pereira as well. He seems like a very durable guy. Where Pereira, we've seen him hurt and wobbled so many times. Hill's striking metrics are amazing. And I just feel like he's a better boxer. I think he's going to force pocket exchanges. And I, I even Yuri, I feel like, was having success against Pereira, and Pereira just kind of got that random sequence. And I feel like Hill's got the better cardio. I think he's a better um, boxer. And I just feel like he's also more durable. It's like it, Pereira can shut out anyone with that left hook, but I don't know. I or maybe the leg kicks, but I don't know. I just feel like, I, I just feel like Hill's a better boxer and he's just going to be landing in this fight overall. And I just, I overall just like, like him to win. Um, Gugabe, I don't know if you can talk right now, but what do you think of the matchup overall? Um, yeah, if Hill's functional was like, um, I had Pereira against, um, last time. Uh, I know, sorry, I had Pereira against, um, Jerry last time. So yeah. he's melting down a bit. It's all good. Oh, you're fine. Um, yeah. I, t- I felt like Jerry looked like the favorite last time just off the cardio and the pace pushing. I think Hill's a better version of Jerry. And consequentially, yeah. I just kind of probably take... Um, yeah, I think like live bets probably the best way of doing it. Anyway, back in a second. Yeah, that's fine. I'll go into Zhang and Yan. And if this needs to turn into like a bit of a solo pod, we can... Um, Zhang, I've generally kind of hated her. <laughs> you guys are hilarious, man. Um, I've generally kind of like hated Zhang. She's kind of annoyed me just because I feel like she's not technically like the best fighter, but she's 
kind of turned me just with some of her recent performances. Like her physicality is insane. And I do think that grappling performance against Lamos was overall pretty good. And she definitely has a grappling upside in this matchup overall. So like her being a favorite in general makes sense. But yeah, and like Zane's just like a physical specimen. But if this turns out to be a striking fight, like a pure striking fight, I think this would be very, very competitive. Um, Jan has really, really good striking metrics overall and i do think it would be very like quite competitive and jan has shown that she can be kind of taken down beat up and controlled at times so like obviously zen could just have that path to victory and just like maul on the mat so she's a rightful favorite but she showed decent takedown defense at times and has scrambled up at times so or if zen just doesn't urgently grapple like there's ways for this fight to play out on the feet in which case, I think this will be a comp very, very competitive fight. Like, I think they're both good strikers. Zhang is probably more powerful, but I think Yan has really, really good volume and good combinations. And I think it can turn into an interesting fight overall. But I do think Zhang, rifle favorite overall, just because of the grappling upside. Uh, you have anything to add on Zhang and Yan? Um, yeah, I feel like if Zhang grapples, she could just win. So, like, I agree. Like, if, if Jan gets, like, a striking match, she's definitely competitive, but just feels like one takedown fights over kind of situation, or just, like, Jan is just so bad as a grappler. Um, yeah. And, like, yeah, again, back, back to Pereira Hill. I just feel like Hill, if, if Hill's not compromised in the leg or doesn't get, like, flatlined, he's probably the... He has to be the start. Yeah, I think yeah. he might be, but if you give it, like, I, I think Pereira's best round is going to be round one. It's just, like, it gives you enough window to see Hill's approach and if Hill's fucked. No problem, yeah. mate. <laughs> no, I feel... All right, hey. Some of you might, you know, the baby is interfering, but also I welcome it. It's the first time on the podcast, and the fact Ugabe's doing this right now for UFC 300, he's a man of the people, so I'm all for it. We, we can deal with a little disruption. I don't know. It might be the baby might be better than your old audio issues anyway. So, you know, it, it's all good. Um, Not the same experience. So magic on the show anyway, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, like nothing really else to add on those. But yeah, I do think like the Hill injury, just because like how he looks could be a big thing there. But overall, like, I don't know if, if this was like prime Hill, I'd, I'd probably be playing him. Um, yeah, I just like his I cardio. I just like his cardio and durability, and I, I really think he's just he's a better boxer. Like Pereira has a left hook, but an inside boxing. Like I, I, I've always liked Hill. Like I played him versus um, Glover, and that was like easy. So I don't know. But going into a very interesting fight, where like I have a little stronger opinion from like a a, bet, a betting perspective. There's a couple spots I like on this one, but um, Holloway Gaethje. I think Holloway is the side here. Like, yeah. just Gaethje could win. Like, we've seen how um, Holloway struggle with guys who can just hit harder than him before. But, dude, like, Holloway, like, the best example of a high floor in a matchup, Holloway has 93 UFC rounds. He's never been knocked down, which is insane. And he's only been finished by submission, which means nothing here against Gaethje. Gaethje couldn't submit anyone. But, um... 93 UFC rounds. He's never been knocked down. And in the last 11 years, he's lost to two guys, Volkanovski and Poirier. And he was competitive in two of those fights against Volkanovski. And Poirier, he was like, I rewatched that fight. It was really close. Like, like I, I think Holloway was c consistently winning more, but Poirier just stunned him a couple times, you know, that kind of stole the round. But if you think about it, in every fight, he's won. Every, every other fight in the last, like, what, 11 years, he's won. Those two guys, he lost to them, but he still made it to the cards and landed over 100 significant strikes in every one of those fights. So it's just like he has a high floor in this matchup. Like, if he loses, I don't think he's going to get knocked out. Like, everyone seems to think plus 150 inside the distance for Gaethje seems a little crazy just because, like, I, I don't know. I feel like just because that head kick, everyone th is thinking like he hits hard. But I'm just saying like how is the most durable guy maybe we've ever seen? I don't think you could grab 93 rounds on anyone. So maybe John Jones. I don't even know, know if he has that many rounds. Um, like we're talking about historic durability. And dude, Gaethje's chinny. Like 
plus 240, no scorecards for Max Holloway is insane. Like, I really, really, really like that because I like I know Gaethje hits harder, but I think Max is more durable and, and Max will land here. Like Gaethje doesn't Gaethje gets hit a lot. Um, and we've seen him hurt multiple times. We've seen him knocked out by guys before. And I also just feel like Gaethje's stock couldn't be higher right now. He's like the BMF champion. So, like, I feel like if you paired these guys up since they've been in the UFC, there's several times in that run where Holloway would have either been a favorite or it would have been very even. Like, I think this is, like, the best line you could ever get on Holloway against Gaethje. Um, just, like, from, like, a macro perspective. Um so, like, yeah, making some points there. Like, I, th- I think the durability side is on how, like, could, could Gaethje, like, knock him out? Yeah, like, he could maybe hurt him. But Max is just, like, he's so durable. Like, he's always had an insane chin. He's also a better grappler. Another reason I like the no score cards. If for whatever reason he, like, hurt Gaethje, he's more likely to get a club and sub than the other way around. And I don't think it will, like, take Gaethje down. But Gaethje's historically bad as a submission grappler. I don't think it will happen. But Holloway's a better submission grappler for sure too um and so there's all that and then just like from a round winning perspective i just think it's going to be tight i think it's going to be a really really competitive fight and i i honestly probably think max will be landing more and gaethje might be landing a little harder at times but i don't know like i, I just feel like the rounds will be really competitive i think max probably has a little more i think max has more volume upside and i think he's more durable I'm expecting a very competitive fight, though, like overall. But at plus 150, I feel like I like plus 150 Holloway. I like no scorecards plus 240 Holloway, which is insane. Uh, what do you think? Uh, completely agree. I feel like if you get a gauge, it's minus. Like, I, I took Holloway back when he was like plus 170, plus 180. Yeah. I've been looking this mm-hmm. week, just being like, this is insane. Yeah. Gagey doesn't defend his body at all. Holloway will land 200 body strikes in, for, in a five round. But like, yeah. Holloway is a good body hitter. Um, yeah. Gagey's wins have generally aged very badly, or if they even are wins. Like, what's his best recent performance? Well, he had the big cry. Oh, yeah, he lost round one, and he just kind of, he landed a head kick. It's like, whatever. I don't I, I don't give a fuck. Chandler hurt yeah. him. Khabib this, was, yeah, was Yeah, Khabib was hurting him at times. Or, like, Oli knocked him down twice. Oliveira knocked him down twice. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, because yeah, probably won that fight, A, and B, absolute, you know, bold in parity, and he won on cardio, and it's just like, is he going to beat Max on cardio? Like, my opinion, if you're going to take Gage, if you're going to think Gage is a massive favourite, there's two pathways. It's either if you think the late kicks just going to singly win the fight, I'm just saying hypothetically, if you, know, if you get Cap Gage's favourite, you've got to either give Gage, like, a large chance of KO winning him, which seems unlikely, and yes. you, or you got to really lean on the um, leg kicks. I don't think modern Gage even leg kicks that much. Like I feel like since yeah, he's he, had this he kind of boxing rerun, well, yeah, he's a lot more patient. Kind of, his leg kicks are kind of meathead when he's exchanging in the pocket. You know, it's not like he's like some range controller where he's doing it. I don't know. It's just yeah. I, like I, I think rounds are going to be tight, and I don't know. Gage has. I just feel like Holloway's going to land a lot, and he doesn't get knocked out. So, against a guy who gets hurt in Gage G, in what will probably be a very competitive fight, you know? Like, if this was even, I would probably be like, mm, I don't really feel like dealing with this, you know? But that I would probably cap it closer to even, wouldn't you? And, and he's right now he's 40% implied, Holloway. I think Holloway should be favorite, like, just... Yeah, yeah. I, I just feel like, yeah, Holloway, just knowing what Holloway does, like, it's going to be a sport, like, three rounds in, where Holloway is just going to start landing for the body and going to keep landing for the body. Like, Gagey has never defended the body strike from anybody. It's just not yeah. in how he strikes. And Holloway yeah. is one of the best body hitters in the UFC history, so there's a good chance that eventually it's just going to be Holloway. Like, unless Holloway, Holloway could get flatlined, like, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's pretty, minus 160 for it to be the first time is very adventurous. I, I, I honestly, like, I don't, that no scorecards is crazy, man. Because I, I really don't. I think I would almost favor Holloway to win inside the distance. Like, oh, yep. like I would put him like minus 140 because I also think he has like the club and sub path. Like, if someone gets hurt, I, I don't know. And like, look at Charles just fucking flatline Gagey. Like, Max could easily do it. I don't know. Um, I, I, I do honestly, I, I think like there's the ways for Gagey to become 
where you're like, okay, the way for him to cover the line, if he just KO ones at a large clip, I doubt it. I, like, it could happen in this one version of the fight, but I don't think he does it enough over 100 fights to, like, warrant it. The leg kicks, and like you said, I, I tend to think they're not going to play as much impact as other people think. And then something like this, like the size advantage or just, like, he hits harder, but I just feel like, I just feel like Gaethje can get hurt enough to where it kind of, like, and it's not like they're going to be grappling either. And Max is bigger, isn't he? Like as far as like height, or it's got to be really good. I they're think the same. Five One inch yeah. difference. That's it. Yeah. So so they're basically the same. Like Gaethje's more of a solid guy, but I do think like Max was Max like he couldn't make lightweight whenever he had to fight Khabib. Remember on yeah. like a week notice, he literally couldn't cut down. So he's not like a small guy. Like he's skinnier at 145, but I feel like his frame can handle 155. Like. Connor's frame, I don't like him at 155, 170. I feel like Connor is best at 145 with his speed and he, when he had length on people, and he doesn't have that anymore. Where like Max is tall enough to where I feel like he'll be okay. But yeah, like no scorecards, Holloway. And then I, I like Hol Holloway Moneyline and Holloway KO. Like I, I generally just like lean him in the fight, but I'm not saying, like I still think it's a very, very competitive fight. But when you have a guy, who has had 93 UFC rounds and has never been knocked down, he probably makes the scorecards very, very, very often. Could hurt Gaethje in that time because Gaethje is chinny. I, like, I, I, people are forgetting. He's a, chin, he's a chinny guy. And if he gets to the scorecards, he's probably he's landing over 100 significant strikes. You know, like Poya just okay. landed 27 and 1, you know. I mean, yeah, it's also my thing. It's just like, like even Gagey versus the ghost of Matt, ghost of um, Tony Ferguson, it was like 140 to 130. Yeah, yeah. But like Gagey has never outlanded anybody over minutes. Like, he just well, he, he's never done it. He absorbed 7.5 significant starts per minute, and he had land 7.35. Like all his fights, it's like Holloway can play that type of fight. <laughs> he just want to like, like the, the, the most Gagey's ever outlanded anybody by is like 10 strikes. And that was yeah. like including like TKO Flores. Where it's like, I, like, I, like I just don't think Gaethje is. It's, it's like Max has a high floor, and I think Gaethje has a low ceiling because of his yeah. fighting style. Like I know he's gotten more, you know, chill and like more composed in recent fights, but still, he's like two and three, or he's three and two in his last five fights. And like the Chandler Fizzy Poirier fights, like a lot of those, like he got like Poirier hurt him. Chandler hurt him, you know, Fazib, I, I he, he fought well against Fazib, but that was close. Um, yeah, he did. By six, he, six, six strikes. And, and yeah, Fazib, I mean, I'm not saying he literally never out, but he never puts like 50 strikes on something. He never, he never like doubles something. He, never 50 he also seven, started yeah. outlanding Fazib because Fazib gassed, you know, like Holloway's not going to gas. He outlanded Fazib in third, third round, 41-29. Like, dude, Holloway isn't going to be gassing in round three. That, like that's the only yeah. reason he started outlanding him. Um, I will say Gaethje has underrated cardio though. Like he does have like the ability to kind of keep. Um, I, I will give him that, but like Holloway has insane cardio, and I, it'll probably just be a war at plus one fifty with no scorecards plus two thirty. You know, um, so yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, on, I'm on for like two you pre. I got I got like they, they like prop openers. They have like Holloway KO like. Plus twelve hundred, like, like the proper openers and fans are just insane, like yeah. just insane numbers. Um, yeah, I think that, I think at like plus one forty, I probably err more towards just going in live because I feel like you probably get five minutes of gaugey for like kind of free essentially, where you just like gaugey's best round is probably going to be round one. You probably avoid the KO one. You can see what the leg kicks are happening, and yeah. Holloway will kind of build kind of thing. Also, yeah, Holloway versus Poye. Like I, I think Poye was. I think Poirier versus Holloway, the lightweight rematch, was a coin flip. Like, I had Poirier at the time, and, like, I think that was a coin flip. Like, I think Holloway was a minute winner there. I thought Holloway was the minute winner overall, and, like, Poirier had landed a couple big shots in, like, the perfect moments in rounds. Yeah. yeah the big clinch like, in round four. The clinch in round four just turned all the way back. He was starting yes. the world's out, and he just turns it back on. Yeah. Like, for sure. Um Yeah. And also, I, we're, we'll try to do a lot of this card, but if anyone wants, like, a specific fight, Put in the comments or the super chat or whatever. Um, Oliveira and Sarukian. Um, I think the I think the line's reasonable. Um, it's probably about right, just because I feel yep. like um, 
Sarukin's a better round winner with the wrestling. Honestly, he's probably a better range control striker as well. He's also probably more durable, and he's a tough guy. It looks like he's a very, very tough guy to submit um, as well. Like, the way he was just kind of stifling Hamos and, like, um, Alvarez and stuff. So, like, I feel like Sarukin should be okay. But Charles is just, like, very dangerous, so it's always a little – when, when you're like minus two something against Charles, it's always a little scary because he can finish anyone, you know. Um, but Saruki and I feel like is an overall like more processed fighter, so I think like him being around minus two hundred makes sense overall. Um, what do you think? I uh, I, I think Oliveira should be like at worst play like, plus two hundred to crunch anybody. Like I just feel like yeah, Oliveira is just the it's just the glass like yeah, he's a glass cannon, but he. Oliveira exists between plus 200 and minus 200 in my book. There's like nobody I would take Oliveira at minus 200 against. There's like nobody I would take at minus 200 against Oliveira. Just nature of how he fights. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think Sorokin should win, but like, I, yeah, I think 66% is fine. Like, yeah. The line's probably not right. Yeah. I know people like Sorokin decision, but I think Sorokin decision at like plus 300 is not bad, but my concern is Oliveira will just do random spazzy things off his back and will quit. So just like, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's my concern. Where it's just like, yeah, I agree. Sarukin could control him, but I feel like Sarukin could just uh, Oliveira could start going for stupid leg locks or something, and exhaust himself and have a cry and just collapse. Which means that, like, you know, I, I, I think, yeah, I think the GVD is a bit wide. But yeah, the concern is just Oliveira being Oliveira and just refusing to lose with dignity. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think it's a good fight, but yeah, I, I think I, I think sixty six percent of Sarukin is playing on. Like, I, but yeah, I, there, there was like. Apart from like Kwan Khabib, and even then, like Kwan Khabib could get hit. Like, yeah, you know, if Kwan Khabib walked into some big Oliver and you can around one, you're not fucking shocked though. Like, Khabib was stupid hitable. Yeah. I, I just don't, I just don't think anybody can really be much bigger favorite against Oliver. And yeah, Oliver will pass to me and pass. Yeah. Um. I I I think the line's fine. I I, I think it's just like pass personal. I think Sarah Dean's gonna win, but I do think Oliver is a dangerous guy. Um, Bo Nickel and Cody Brundage. Uh, Brundage via illegal shot to the back of the head, not being hurt and quitting. Um, I mean, you can't play nickel with this prize. Like, I, 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 I know you're going to be taking a shot on Brundage. Like, I, I think nickel yeah. would. You're uh, he's going to be like a pass overall. I think Brundage, like, he kind of quits. Like, I was kind of tempted nickel sub because I think nickel's no bread knockout guy now because, like, yeah. flatline that random guy, but. Positional TK, I just feel like the risk of positional TKO here is big enough. I just don't want to bet some decision and then just get fucked because um, Brundage decides to quit so I'm half guard GMP. Like, I just wish there was a way in MMA where like they could somehow divide out positional TKOs from like actual KOs or it's just like it would just make betting a lot better because it feels like there's just so much space in the sport to get fucked where it's just like you, you bet yeah. some way submission, they win by like mount TKO and like, well, fuck, I was, I was right because they were dominating grappling, but like, yeah. You get fucked and like vice versa yeah. with club subs. Why you if there was some way they could somehow like tidy it up so it's just like if you get stuff within five seconds for knockdown, it's a knockout, and if you get like positional TKO, that's a submission. I think that would just make the sport a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Um I will say though, like I I've watched Bo Nickel wrestle for a long time. Like I'm a fan, you know, I'm a fan of college wrestling and everything, but he like there's so many questions about him still. Like, I'm sure, I mean, he can wrestle his ass off, like, and we saw Dumas out wrestling Brundage, so it's like, you know, Nickel will probably do it, and he'll probably win via doing that, but like, his his inside the distance lines are being, like, I, I think there's going to be a point, I feel like playing, like, Nickel decision and stuff or, like, some overs in his next few fights, I'm not saying it will happen on this one, but if you just do it starting this one, this next couple, like the overs and like, I just am not sold that he's some finisher. Like I could easily see him just being a guy who like rides out decisions and stuff. And like, and I just feel like he's getting priced. Like he can sub everybody. And I, I feel like, you know, if you play it the next three times and stuff and it just hits once you made a lot <laughs> because he's being priced. Like he's like minus 900 inside the distance, every fight. I don't know what he is right yeah. now. What is yeah, like, I agree. Like, even here, it's just like, I, I don't think Nichols' submission game is that good. And, it's like, if Brundage just, like, moves backwards for two minutes and avoids it, and it's just like, all right, now he's got three minutes to find it. Now he's got three minutes to find it around once up. I, I think, yeah, I, I think. 
Yeah. Nickel decision. Nickel. 1,500 inside the distance. It's just like I – you just play the, like, <laughs> the decision or something, like, on you know, the opposite yep. of that. And then his next four fights, it hits one time and you win money. And, like, I, like I just feel like, yeah. Particularly when it's, like, he's, like, a grappling-centric finisher. Or it just, I just feel like if the other person's playing negative, it's hard, even if you're a fucking good jiu-jitsu guy, to sub somebody that kind of clip in, in like, five minutes. Yeah. Like, if Brundage just decides to move backwards for two minutes, it's like, all right, now you've now you've got, like, three minutes left on the clock. You know, you've got, like, you know, it's, gen- and it's not like he's, like, some super vicious Oliveira style where he's, like, hitting wonky shit. Like, even Jamie Jay- Pickett, Jamie Pickett looked like it was going to go over fine. And then, yeah, he got hit in the nuts and quit. Well, yeah, that was, should have been DQ or NC. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Pickett's, um, oh, sorry, um, Nichols finishing has been massively overrated, like, He's just going yeah, to like, it, it, It'll probably hit here. He'll probably get a finish here, but I feel like there's going to be, like, times where he's going to be fighting a guy who can, like, neutralize to a degree, and he's going to be, like, minus 1,500 inside the distance. And, it, like, yeah, I almost feel like you just are just playing against it, like, soon, you know? Um, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, like only one and a half. I'll say one and a half. Yeah, like, plus 300 or some shit. Like, plus 250. Like, seven and a half minutes. Even, like, Star Wars like, round two was, like, plus 150. She, He's a finisher because like, he's fighting bums, you know. Like, like he might, and if he it ends up, I don't know, if he's going against like top fifteen guys, you know, or top twenty guys, and he's finishing them, I'll like change my attitude on it. But like, I just because you can finish somebody in the first round really quick, and like who aren't good, like he he, he was he's been fed competition. Like, I mean, let's be real. Um, and also, like, you have to understand grappling. If somebody just fucking locks full guard or half guard on you or just clings to you, it's just like, it's fucking hard to, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, 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 grappling does not work like that. Like, if Brundage just, like, spends 90 seconds on his feet and then just locks half guard, it's like, all right, half the round's gone. Like, yeah, yeah. you'll probably get finished, but, like, it's, that kind of percentage is hard. He like, even, I've been with good he, grappling guys and they can't finish he, me in five minutes because I can fucking stall like a motherfucker. He grappled Elliot Kelly and Oliver Taza on um, the UFC Fight Pass like invitationals, and I like watched them, and they went to a decision. Like they went, like, he didn't get a submission, you know. Like, I mean, so, Taza was. I mean, Taza's like fucking top ten in the world, isn't he? I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. Like, there are guys he's like gone against who he just like can't just auto sub. Like people are acting like he's like Gordon Ryan or something, and he's not. Yeah, they he's have, not. yeah, they had an exhibition too. Like, I don't, yeah, yeah, but I mean, he is a great, I, I will say he's a great wrestler though. And, you know, he could go very far because he could win the belt, you know, like, I, honestly, he probably, he, I would pick him to beat Alex Pereira. Like he'd probably just out wrestle him, you know? Um, yeah. But there's other, like, like him versus like Mal Coon in like a five rounder. That would be interesting. You know, just like stuff like that. That would um, be interesting. The the, 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 the American psyche would break like Australian supremacy, like, just Lebanese man is the greatest wrestler to ever live. Like, <laughs> it, I, if we start wrestling, would you take um, Jacob Malkoon or um, Adam Sizeyev? Oh um, I'll take Malkoon over anybody at this point. Exactly. Uh, what, what's his name? What's that Greco-Roman guy? Like the famous one who's fucking like, Carolyn. There we go. Yeah. Malkoon yeah. beats Carolyn. Who, who lost we know. to uh, Ruland Garner in like '96 or something? Yeah, this was some something like stupid, like penalty or some shit, and people were very angry. It was off criteria because he let go of the lock, um, and they oh, yeah. they got rid of that rule. Um, yep. Okay, let's let's go into some of the prelims. I will say, um, we can just kind of like pick some off. I don't want to do all of I them, like, but I, like Jerry Rocky I, is good. I I think Bobby Green should win that fight. Like I know, I know, he, I know he got flatlined, but like. He got flatlined by like Drew Dober and Jalen Turner, and he was also like beating the fuck out of Drew Dober for that. And, like Jim Miller, it's awesome. Like honestly, like how could you root, root against him? Like great guy, but his wins are versus bums. I mean, when you look at his like record, like he lost to Vince Pichel and Joe Selecki, who are like mid tier. He beats. Eric Gonzalez, Nicholas Mota, and Donald Cerrone. Then he loses to Alexander Hernandez, like, pretty clearly. And then he beats Jesse Butler, which means literally nothing to me. And Gabriel Benitez. And Benitez just kind of can, like, wilt to, like, some of the grappling and stuff. 
but like Bobby Green is so much better than any of the last 10 guys I said, and he's lost to several of them. And I just feel like Green is just going to outland him, get ahead on the numbers. Like his striking metrics are way better. And, and just, I, I don't know. I just feel like because he got knocked out badly recently, everyone just thinks like Miller's just going to like knock him out, you know? But I think Green's more likely to knock out Miller. And I just feel like Miller, Green's a better wrestler. He's a better striker. Miller's a better submission grappler. But I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like Green is just going to like win unless if he gets randomly finished, you know? Yeah. Um, I personally think Bobby Green is unplayable plus minus 200. Just uh, just a personal conviction around Bobby Green because he just, that's how Bobby Green is. Yeah. Like, I just feel like, you know, Bobby Green has this ability to just lose the split decision like, just on stupidity. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I think Jim Miller, I, again, I've, I've been fouling Jim Miller for quite a while. Like, Jim Miller actually showed better cardio than expected against Benitez. That was a decent performance. And yeah. Green's like kind of flagging a bit. Like, Green was kind of getting outstruck by Gordon and like was kind of hit against Ferguson and like. It's been a while since we had a really good green performance, but I, yeah, I, I agree with your conception. Like, done to my head, great minus 180. I just, I'm happy to leave it. I, I feel like there's a good chance. I, I'm going to look after round one. Like, if round one is competitive, I'd rather take Bobby Green. Like, if I can get Bobby Green at like minus 110 after round one, or even like minus 180, but Miller started to slow down a bit, I'd much rather take that, just personally. Yeah, that's fair. That's the, fair. Under, the under at plus is a little bit interesting because I think it's going to be high pace, but they're both like, Pretty durable, so who knows? But yeah, I, I, I took and I took like some Bobby Green KO three that kind of stuff. I feel like if Bobby Green's going to really cover. It's going to be based off that late, that sort of late round beating his ass late, yeah, pace push. So like, yeah, I, I just rather steer it to the upside of like Bobby Green KO three plus two thousand as opposed to like taking a money line. So I feel like Miller will compete as long as he has tank. I got in on Aljo minus one fifteen. He's like minus one eighty now because I I feel like I, I just feel like. He's a better. A he has fight. a. He, he's. He, it's a weird fight, but he's a. He has a grappling upside. But honestly, even if like he can't get the grappling going on the feet, I think he can win. Like yeah, he, like he can like yeah. Decision neutralize kind of, kick, yeah, yeah, win, yeah. like and all that. Like because even if you look, he took a striking. Uh, he took a fight. He took a round off O'Malley, and O'Malley's a better striker than Cater like, for sure. Um, he yeah. took a round off O'Malley by not getting a takedown. Like he's always done that stuff where he can like neutralize blah 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 and i just feel like i i, I aljo aljo is so good I, th- I think people like forget you know and like just i thought cater looked like shit versus allen and and, and even in some other matchups like yeah. it, even against holloway i know that was like a, a holloway historic performance but cater just didn't look good in that one i just and he's so hittable he absorbs so many strikes and sterling doesn't i feel like even on the feet it'll be competitive but i would honestly p- take aljo because he can cage push kick move be evasive like a three round three rounder aljo is so tough to beat like he just doesn't drop a lot of rounds and i I also feel like he could just get a backpack you know too um so the the lines come in though like at this point like minus 180 i don't know if it's like worth it anymore but i got him minus 115 but uh what do you think of holm harrison um if harrison gets on top she probably finishes if she doesn't she probably looks bad Holm looked bad against mbs um probably wide like yeah. I don't know, it's one of those fights. Like, if Harrison's game plan goes off, Harrison's going to look minus 10 billion um, just because of how Harrison fights. Like, if Harrison ever gets on top of her because Hold H, which is an absolute skull fuxer. But, like, yeah, various questions there. I, I kind of I want Harrison to be home. Then we get, like, we'll grow Pennington at, like, plus 300 against Harrison. Then we go crazy on, like, Pennington or Payne against um, Harrison. I think that would be, like, an incredible spot where we're just, like, like imagine like next fight, like Harrison get Harrison gets to fight uh, Pennington for the belt over five rounds, and, plus, and Pennington's like plus three hundred. That would be the max bet. Like I'm kind of rooting for Harrison because I'm like, I think Holm probably a bit wide, but like there's enough doubts I don't want to get on her, and like I think she's kind of old and past the bit. Yeah, um, yeah, um, I feel I feel like Moicano's value at his line, but like. If I play him, he's going to get randomly knocked out in the first exchange. If I don't play him... No, he's going to randomly guillotined. Turner is subbing oh, Moicano because it's how Turner operates. He subs the most <laughs> stupid people because fuck you. And then if he... You know, if I don't play Moicano, I just feel like he's going to like... I, I mean, Matt Frivola, I would grapple like 30-27 Jalen Turner. Matt Frivola um, was a fucking good fighter. How dare you? Matt Frivola was actually good. Mo, Mo, Moicano's a better grappler than Frivola. Like, Frivola's a fine wrestler, but Moicano's better. 
uh, especially yeah. when you add, like the grappling aspect and like going what kind to, of yeah going back to Go Sterling Kaiser. Uh, I got if it was like evens, I probably would take Sterling like you did. I feel like personally at this price, I'd rather wait around and look for Kater. I just feel like, yeah, there's a good chance. Like, like, like if Kater's an injury, I don't want to bet him three, but like, I feel like there's a chance, like, after a round. Yeah. Kater yeah. takes bits forever. I don't know how Aljo's going to deal with like reach and size parity because I feel like a lot of Aljo striking is based on him being so fucking nerdly and long and like fighting bantam weights. Well, like, it, it could be a possibility. Oh, yeah. interesting. Uh, I'm going to go back to Jerry versus Rakic. I've actually got a take on this one. Okay, good. Now imagine that there was a fighter who was vulnerable to leg kicks and takedowns. And imagine he was fighting a man who only does leg kicks and takedowns. Why the fuck is Rakic only minus one? Why the fuck is Rakic even? He should be like minus 200 at worst. Like, Rakic should so? kick him in the leg and put him in the like, leg. Yeah, like, my view of this is like either Rakic fights intelligently and looks minus 500 because it was kicking him in the leg five times and Jerry's leg will come off. Or, and it will just get on top of him as well because Jerry's like bad. Like, Jerry has like these massive gaping holes. Or, like, Jerry does the Jerry fight, and it's 50 50 because, like, Rakic can knock him out. Jerry can knock him out. Like, what? Jerry got knocked out four, four months ago. Yeah, I, I, again, like, Rakic kind of has some IQ issues, but, like, I don't understand why people are so. Like, I think Jerry's been kind of fortunate as USA run to begin with. And, like, he's 12 years in, he's been started getting knocked out. He's always been an athletic bully, so it's possibly just kind of just loses a step. And like Rakic yeah. could just sit on the leg kicks and wait. Like, remember that Rakic first Ledet? Not saying that Jerry is like Ledet, I thought, but like Rakic just had multiple fights where he just kicked the guy in the leg and won it automatically. And like that is viable here. Yeah. Like, um, my view is like best case scenario, Jerry is he wins a fucking insanity war, which point 50 50. Oh, well, Rakic could just dominate. What do you think of Sodik and Lopez? Are you finally going to be playing Sodik at uh, plus money? I think Sadiq is the side, but I think Sadiq is fragile as fuck. So Sadiq is the flyaway, is the featherweight to Ryan Span to me. Like he had this infuriating run up of division where he like he beat he beat because he was like minus three hundred against people when he came up the division. He gets these fucking stupid wars and pulled them out through pure explosive. Like again, like he almost lost against Benitez, he almost lost against Philly. Like coming up the division, he wasn't that good. Even Caseras, like he won Caseras off leg kicks. Like he was actually getting he was losing the first round. Yeah. Um Lopez is a complete name, but like, yeah, Yusuf is kind of fragile. Like, he hasn't been knocked out yet, but he's been hurt a bunch of times. Um, yeah, I, I think Yusuf will pass, but pass. Fair enough. Um, let's end talking about Andraj and Marina Rodriguez. Um, I, 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 I kind of think. I don't look, give me give me your take because I want to look at some props for a second. But give me your take on the fight. Uh, I feel like a lot of the Andrade favorite sort of stuff has to be based off Andrade going for takedowns. So she's like she's gone for like ten takedowns in the last ten fights. Like she's kind of stopped being that woman, which partly was because like she's had a bunch of quick fights and like better grapplers yeah. that kind of stuff. But like, yeah, I think people are showing me you get to see the twenty you get to see a twenty takedown and charge performance. I, I just don't think that. I think Andrade just like loves her hands now. I think Andrade just decided that she is Mike Tyson. It's just how she's kind of started conceptualizing her career. Yeah, I think Marina's is a better striker. Like again, Andrade is stupid hitable. Marina hits fucking hard. Like there's a good chance that Marina just takes her head off. And also like with the, with the grappling control thing, Andrade isn't like somebody who will just stay in your guard and just like chill. She'll like go for all these sort of wrestling moves. And, she hasn't really got good control, and she, you know, she won't, won't, it's like Andrade will just get the half guards and hang out on top of the half guard kind of a thing. Yeah, which isn't how Andrade is wired. So based off all that, I go Marina. Like Marina's a lot bigger. Marina is. I, 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 I can see how Andrade could control her, but like, I don't. Know, I just think Marina's a lot bigger. She so hit her a lot harder. I, I Thank think you for telling I us like that Marina. Yeah. Go in. I, I, I lean Marina a little bit in the fight, especially at plus money. I just, I, I mean, Andrade yeah. is just still a good, a good fighter, but like, I generally think he'll play on the feet where I think Marina's better. Um, yeah. Also, Marina okay. KO plus four hundred, I kind of like just because like Andrade gets hurt like every fight, you know, and, and Marina yeah. hits fucking like Marina hits like a man. She, she's like one of the heavier hitters, you know, and she's just like Andrade gets hit a lot as well it's not it's not even like a singular ko like look what like marina just beat the fuck out of um michelle waterson you know um but i leave marina a bit in effect because i just feel like it's gonna stay out on the feet and i think she's just a better striker than andrage like like look at what blanchfield is doing to andrage at times you know 
Jan knocked her out. Like Marino is better than Jan. Um, yeah, Darren was out striking her. Like Darren was out striking her for the first four minutes and go ahead. Yeah, like Marina is a better striker for sure, and I think it's going to play out there. So that's why I kind of went with her, especially especially at plus money. But um, I'm ho- I'm hoping the line kind of I'm hoping money comes in on the draws because I would like if I got a big plus number on Rodriguez. So like a lot of live underdogs on this card. Um, I think like Holloway is a good spot. I kind of like Moicano a bit just because like it's just a big number. Like he could easily get knocked out, but plus like. 190 or he could just yeah. dominate with grappling i kind of like um i think galbrad's a little bit wide I, I i just feel like plus two six plus 240 or just like I think he's gonna have like a 50 yeah. 50 downside striking match with him and like think he's like, i think the line's what, like what, what's the what's the minus 300 though like i mean like yeah because because i feel like i i don't know i just feel like if garbrandt win i don't know it's just like a thing if like good Figgy shows up, he wins this fight very, very often, and, and, and Garbrandt could just die at any point. But like even if bad Figueroa, because we've seen him look awful at times, even if bad Figueroa shows up, Garbrandt, I just like I don't think he, I don't even know if he can take advantage of it. Like, you know, yeah, um, well, like even if, yeah, I think dynamic is just. 50, I just, I just think they get like stand at distance, throwing like ten strikes around each, and it's just going to be like. Yeah, I, I just struggle to say. I just struggle. I think he's not probably get. I don't think he's get proactively grapple. I don't think he's going to massively outwork him. Go. Like he could. I mean, like Garbrandt is hard to like Garbrandt completely yeah. shut down Gross. Like I, yeah, I, I don't think that he can just like just bomb takedowns on Garbrandt. That would be insane. Yeah, it's not always ever done, and like it's just hard. And, like I understand that. Yeah, I think he's obviously got durability edge, but like minus for like minus three hundred. Are you sure? <laughs> Yeah, like I um, like, like if I'm betting a minus three hundred, I've got to exp- I've got to think the guys like are up. Like I've got to, I, for me to bet minus three hundred, I've got to like visualize like twenty takedowns. Yeah, I, I, like, I see what you mean. Yeah, um, where is the where's the where's, where's the positive where, where's the positive skew here? Yeah, I think we generally at least, even though we scramble mindedly went through <laughs> the fights, yeah. just like I think we generally I got it. Everything. But. It's stuff. I'm still kind of like finalizing my opinions on some things, but there's some spots you know that I like. Like I like some of the Holloway stuff. Uh, I I like Green against Miller, but um, we'll talk about um, all my breakdowns in the in the chat. I'll give out all my my stuff in there too. I'm on, but, um, what's up? I'm on a cage. I'm on a cage Holloway and Garbrandt at the moment. I think live bets on Hill Holloway ad and yeah. guitar should be decent spots. Yusuf tempts me. It's just I just feel like he's so fucking fragile. It's just like just, Yusuf just feels like he, like Yusuf's annoying because it just feels like they're gonna meet in the middle in a minute and just one's gonna die and it's gonna be like oh okay yeah um all right I'm gonna roll though but I will talk to you next week. Thanks for doing this, especially I know you have baby obligations. Uh, everyone in the chat, give Gugabe some love in the comments because he it's like taking care of a kid and still you know jumping on here. She also behaved very well towards the end. She was uh. <laughs> You know, a little, a little loud at first, but good, good, good baby, baby. Good baby overall. Good, good baby God, baby. Song. Good God, baby. Yep. Um, but all right, I'll see you guys all later, and thanks, God, for doing this. Catch gotcha. up. Yeah.